everybody and welcome to episode 22 of the Centre Circle podcast, the new arm of West Midlands football. Today we're going to be discussing England and our Euro 2020 campaign so far. So joining me we've got the usual panel member of Sam and we've got England away veteran Mark who travelled all the way to France all over Europe in 2015 and 2016 following the boys. And just to bring you in, Mark, I know that you're uh, pretty buzzing because you've got a ticket for Tuesday night. Yeah, I don't, I, I wasn't expecting it to be fair, but like I've not been that excited about England the whole time, so I'm uh, it's put, put me up a bit to be fair. Good stuff, right? So let's just dive straight in then. Tournament so far, we've had, obviously had one nil win against Croatia, a nil nil draw against. Uh, in Scotland, and last night we saw our boys bring it home, seven points from the possible nine in the group phase. Uh, we haven't pulled up any trees yet, but uh, in my opinion, I think Gareth's got it spot on in most of the games so far. We still haven't conceded a goal, despite all the talk before the tournament that the defence was going to be perhaps the weak part and moving forward, we've got so many great attacking options. It's actually worked out the other way around, um, and we look pretty solid at the back to me. Um, but yeah, I just want to hand it over to you, boys. What you thought of the tournament so far, as a whole? I think what you say about England first. Um, I agree the defensive stability, but we haven't been tested, and I think anybody anybody argues that is is lying because none of those teams have put any threat really. Um, I think when we, when we've when we've, when we've been good, we've been really good. Like there was probably most of the first half yesterday I thought was fantastic. We had 20 minutes against Croatia. We looked brilliant as well. And I think when we play like that, if there's a complete performance, I think we can beat anybody coming out of that group. On the same note, I think if we see what we did for most of the Croatia game after that 20 minute spell, plus the second half last night, I, I don't give us much hope, to be honest, against them teams. Um, that's not to say we can't. Uh, the tournament as a whole, I've not... <laughs> It's not felt like a tournament, personally, except for the except for the amount of football on TV. I think the lack of a host nation or host nations um, and fans to a degree, I guess. Um, but yeah, for for me, it's um, it's a bit underwhelming the tournament so far. But I think it should perk up the knockout knockout stages they usually do. So. I'd agree. I think that probably the best thing to come out of this tournament at the moment is the refereeing performances, and that's probably saying something. I think I think COVID's had a massive part to play. I think there's only one full stadium at the moment, isn't it? You can tell when it's a full stadium. Um, I think lack of attendance is really affected. Like I don't know, you just watch the games, and I don't know, I've just not got into it as much as maybe I would. Um, I think the World Cups are always bigger than the Euros, but I do tend to get into the Euros. Uh, in terms of England performances, I thought Croatia was a really thoroughly professional job. I think I think we played well all throughout the game without Croatia really looking like they were going to score. Scotland game wasn't very good, um, I don't think, but I think if you ask most people at the start of the tournament what the most difficult game in the group was, I know the lowest rank out the other three sides but I think Scotland say a World Cup final I think it's a bit of a different game from everything else um, and, and I thought we were thoroughly professional again last night I'd like to see a little bit more um, in the second half I'd like to see us kill teams off but I was reading an article on the Athletic this morning and I think Gareth's been looking at you know Spanish teams French teams and gone by I don't think they've necessarily killed teams off before I think he wants to get that 1-0 lead and he'll sit on that 1-0 lead and he's all about winning isn't he I don't think he cares about appeasing the fans I think he's all about winning um, you know we can't fault it at the moment um, I think Tyrone Mings is bang unlucky but it was the right decision to bring Maguire back into the team last night and Marks and we were in a chat with Grant I think called it perfectly the way that Maguire brings the ball out of defence I think we've missed in the previous two games um, I think Saka was fantastic last night. Um, I was against the team selection. I think it should have been Sancho, but I thought he was. I thought he was brilliant. I thought Grealish was good without being amazing. And I love Jack Grealish. Like I don't want Villa fans to say, no, I think Jack Grealish is fantastic, but he was as good as Mason Mount. I think. Um, but I don't know whether Grealish is fully fit. Um, Sterling. I think that we spoke about this earlier. People are criticising Sterling a lot, but he scored her only two goals at the tournament. So. Are we really going to boot him out the side? I don't think so. I think you both said the defence looks solid, and it does. But I agree, Mark, you know, we're yet to be tested, really. And I think if we get the Germans, you know, they're going to test us. But I think we'll beat the Germans if we get the Germans. I don't think we'll beat France if we get French. And I think Portuguese, 
I don't know. It could go either way. So it'll be interesting. But, you know, I'm pleased. It's not the kind of... Have we ever played good football in the tournament, though? Like, looking back, I, I can't recall that we have. So I don't know what the country is expecting, really. Well, that's I think 2018, the... we played quite well. But Panama, you know, you've got to play well against Panama, really, haven't you? I think. I don't think we were good in the Tunisia game, really. It, the tournament football is all about finding a way to win. Nobody remembers, unless you know you're you're a proper football historian about how teams won tournaments. One of the things you know, one of the first things I pointed out to you, Sam, the other day was when Spain won the World Cup in 2010. They won every game one nil. They won every single game one nil. I think they might have won one of the group games two nil, but all the knockout games they went one nil, one nil, one nil the whole time. Portugal won one game in 90 minutes in the last tournament. Uh, Greece. When they won it in 2004, they stunk the place out most games, but they found a way to win. And that's what I think that, you know, we haven't had our moment yet. And that's what I feel optimistic about. We haven't had that 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 moment yet in this tournament. I mean, even 2016, when, when we got beat by Ice, and we had that moment, didn't we? And that was against Wales when Sturridge scored. Every tournament has that moment. We haven't had that yet. That's why I just think that, you know, we're building up nicely. I'm against what you've said there, Sam. I would prefer us to play France to Germany. And, and I know that's I know that might be might be a crazy thing to say, but I have given it some thought. If you think about the French team, right? I know they've got good pedigree. They've they made the last Euros final and they probably should have won it. They battered Portugal. They've just come off a World Cup win. But I actually think if you look at their team to a man, we we've probably got better players. If you take Mbappe out that team. I, I, no, statement I, that is. I, no I, I know it is, but look, left back, for example, they've got fucking Luca Dean, you're playing left back. Who come back in tonight, though, I think. have got a goalkeeper, Hugo Lloris, granted he plays at a bigger team and probably at club level, but he's he's prone to plenty of errors. Right, Varane, don't get me wrong, he's an absolute bastion, but Harry Maguire gets in that team over Kim Bempe. Look, um, what they couldn't get in that team? Well, exactly, but... That's, that's on the national team's manager, isn't it, really? But what I mean is, to a man, I don't actually think that they're, they're, they're that much cop, really. I was, Granted, I was having this conversation about Lloris. I don't think, I, I just think that we can get that French team, whereas the Germans, I think, would probably run us ragged. I would rather, I'd be more comfortable playing France than I would against, against Germany. That's just my personal opinion. I, th- I think, I... I, I... I get what you're saying about... I, I actually think we tactically line up maybe a bit better against France than the fact that we can probably sit in and actually counter-attack them and let them have a bit more of the ball, whereas I think Germany will probably... Germany want a high-scoring game and I don't think we're going to give them that. Um, my my thing with France, though, is that I think... You mentioned Lloris. I think you have to bring in what he brings off the field and actually... Well, on the field, but actually as, as a leader. Um, I think I think he's a very good captain, personally. Um and we don't have that. I don't. I, I. I think you can say what you want about Harry Kane. He's not a very good leader. Is it? In fact, in fact, I'll go as far to say I think he's a terrible leader. He has got charisma for it. I don't think. No, he hasn't. He hasn't got any part. Like, I crit. I criticise Conor Cody at Wolves for a lot of things, but the guy is a very good. He's a very good captain. Um, I think there's been times where I think he hasn't managed the game well, but I think that's the, there's other things that go along with that. But Kane. There's nothing about Harry Kane that inspires anybody to play football. And I'm not saying from the face of it, there is from Hugo Lloris, but the fact of, if you watch that Amazon documentary of Spurs, very, very vocal to his team about not getting back. I think it was Son, he had a moan at him on that. I think he's just very, there's a bit there's a bit about him. And I think with, with Kane, there's absolutely nothing about him. Um, and I think that the little margins of that do come into it with the late year go against the bigger teams. Um, but... I, th- I think France can be had. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think they're this unstoppable force. Hung- Hungary showed that they're um, a disaster waiting to happen. I think with France. And the thing is as well. So to put in on that one, but one of the, one of the points I was going to make just is that we know plenty about them. We know plenty about them. Most of their players play play within the Premier League. Kante, Pogba, they're not unknowns, are they? And you know, I, dis- you know plenty I disagree about with them. your your team. You're saying that we're better. I, one thing I do think we are we are. I don't think no, we're at. not better, but what I, I think mean is I think that France are more beatable than Germany I, for us. I I actually think you won't find a team with a much better squad than us. So from like from our the only the only position I'd say we drop off massively is Kane. Like once you take what Kane yeah, can do. be. Other than that, like 
the fact we're arguing about, not arguing, but the debating over Foden, Grealish, Mount, Saka's put himself in there now as well, Sancho. There's no other team that's got that sort of depth. And we've, we've got depth of that all over the pitch. Like left back, like you say Shaw couldn't play. Obviously, COVID has sort of chilled well. Like, fine. I thought Trippier did a fine job on, on, yeah. on the game against Croatia. Same with right back. Centre back, I don't, think we're, I don't think we're particularly strong there. Is there that much difference between, say, like Cody is the weakest and, and wouldn't she take Maguire out, but say like Mings? Like, I don't, Stones, I don't think so. I think they've all got a mistake in them, but they, the squad's quite deep. Um, and I think that's potentially why he's gone the route he has in the group of making sure that pretty much everyone, barring I think three players, I think, have had minutes because I think we might need them. Whereas I think of France, yeah, they're starting 11. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a question that that's better than ours. I think it's probably better than everyone's, but taken Bappe out I think. I think it is so you've got Kante Pogba they're just unbelievable players like we've said before though, we've got one world, we've got one world class player and he's not playing well so we no. haven't got any world class players playing well in our team at the moment, have we I'm, like, I'm, I'm positive about England, but until Harry Paul Kane starts Pogba, firing... Paul Pogba's no not world-class. I'm for, sorry, Fran- Paul... for France, he is. For, for Man United, he's not. But for France, he's a different player, I think. Yeah, I, t- I tend to agree. I think for France, he's a different animal. I think he he's allowed a lot more time on the ball. I think I think there's a reason that Rabiot plays. Um, I don't know whether there's a there's a thing between him and Pogba. Um, I don't know if there's a Juve link there, because I, I know he now plays there. But I just think, like... He, he looks a different player man playing for playing for France than he does United. United, he looks a shadow of the player. The one thing I will say though, he does give the ball away a hell of a lot, even for France. Um, and that can that you can have that on a counter attack, which is why I do kind of think tactically we it might be a better matchup. But it, we've got the impossible. This is another part of where the tournament stinks. By the way, the draw and the way yeah, it's, all, it's, it's 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 awful. You know, Holland are, Holland are what we were at the last World Cup. They're on. You know, they're a they're a young side on a bit of a freebie, to be fair, and they're going to make probably going to make the semi final just based on the draw. Um, it's going to be Denmark, their, uh, Austria. Their draw is unreal. Their, their draw is unbelievable, and our draw. I mean, who, who do we play? Even if we get through, we still it's an got... easier game, isn't it? I think somehow I don't know how that works. Is it? So is it, 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 it it's if you're playing, if you're playing the, the odds, if you're playing the odds as it stands right now, I mean, Spain are two 0 up. The, the, the projected route goes that it, that it would be Spain, provided that they win the group, but Sweden oh, are winning the group at the moment. You take Spain or Sweden. I've just been watching that Spain game. They are dreadful, Spain. And Laporte's just dreadful. scored, isn't it? Laporte's just scored. They're the one big name dreadful, that I do, I do genuinely think would be. I think, I think that's... Because as well, I think from football and ability, I think we've got a very good chance against Germany. There's a, there's a factor of, though, it's Germany. Like there is that point. Like we do not beat Germany at tournaments. Like and I know things like that have to end, but like I don't know why we're so scared of that German team. I don't. To me, I'm not. I'm not fussed about that German team at all. But the, 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 the only thing that would scare me is they play the, the, the way they line up, and I think we'd have to play a back five against them to counteract that. That's the only agree. thing that would scare me. Hundred yeah. percent agree. We said that today that I think that they would play a back five, but. One, you know, I think as the tournament's gone on, people are getting more frustrated. People are sort of, you know, I said to you the other day that Jack Grealish seems to have become this sort of pissed up middle-aged man's gaza all of a sudden out of nowhere. Oh, get Grealish on, get Grealish on. Look, Jack Grealish is a fantastic player, but I've said many, many times that for me, he will work in some situations. He won't work in all situations. I, uh, I don't believe that last night, you know, that he was outstanding. Yeah, he was good, but... You know, he's probably not brought much more to the team than what Mason Mount would. People can argue that it might not be his preferred position either. But for me, I would not even be considering taking Raheem Sterling at the team. First of all, it was, you've got to take Grealish, you've got to get Grealish in the team. And then when it weren't going right, when Grealish was given a bit of run in the team, you start looking down the pecking order then, you start saying, oh, Sancho must play. But tell me why Sancho should, should play over Raheem Sterling. Tell, tell, I'll, I'll just based, need to know why. based on stats alone, you should play over Raheem Sterling. Like what he's done in the Bundesliga is a lot better than what Sterling's done in the Premier League. Completely and like, agree. The Germans know their football, and their and their press is outraged that we don't even consider Sancho. Like that, that's yeah. going to say something, I think. But I, I'm not. I'm not an avid fan of stats. But one one thing that I've looked into today, and that is that Jaden Sancho has got 20 caps for England, right? He's had seven goal contributions in those 20 caps. Raheem Sterling, in his last 20 games for England, has had 20 goal involvements. 
How many of them there is a massive Sancho? golf there. In fair, it's a massive in, golf. In, in fairness for, for Sancho, though, didn't he didn't he come into into the England setup when we were in the Nations League? So he's probably played against similar level teams, whereas people like Sterling have probably played qualifiers. This, yeah, this is Sterling's previ- previous twenty appearances for England. So you'd probably yeah, say it's within the same window that Sancho's had his twenty caps. Potentially, but how many times have they played together? Because he's quite, potentially quite replaced him. Quite a lot. But what I, I'm trying, I, the point, I, the point I, I'm trying to make there the, is that you need, you need to play well, the Sterling's, Ser, well, Sterling's had, his, uh, had two goal contributions in this tournament alone. Oh, I, I, I'm, the thing is, I'm not even arguing against it because I actually agree Sterling should be playing. Yeah, should. Um, I, I, th- I think you need to line up for the team that the team that you're going to be against. If, 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 if you're going to be playing possession-based football, then Jack Grealish should be the first name on the sheet because he wins free kicks. He slow, he, yeah. he gets you in positions where you can actually set up things against against teams that have got a bank of eight, nine, ten players. Um, do I think if we play a France and we're going to play on the counter attack, I want Jack Grealish playing? Maybe, but I, I, I think then, then I'm looking at Sterling. I'm looking at Sancho. I'm even looking at Saka. At the fact that he's got a bit of pace about him, um, Grealish probably isn't going to be that player. Then he's going to come off the bench, I imagine. But it's a different, it's a different game. And I think Southgate's job now is to try and work out who is going to be perfect for which opposition. Because I think he's played himself, maybe unintentionally, maybe intentionally, but he's played himself into a bit of a selection headache because Saka played 60 really good minutes last night, but he. he you're banking, you're banking 60 good minutes from a young kid to play him against France, Germany or Portugal. Like, I'm not sure. Like, I, th- I think he had a good good hour last night, yeah. But before that, he was, a, he was a question mark in the squad. To be honest, I actually don't think that either will play. I don't think either will play in the next game. He'll go back, he'll go back to see the play more or less played against Scotland, I think. With... I, I, I've, I've had visions of it and I can really see a back four of... Obviously, Pickford, Walker, Maguire, Stones, probably Luke Shaw in at left back. Um, but the fact that I don't know if few people are saying Trippier. Few people are saying Trippier, but I think Shaw's a problem at left back. I think he's that good. No, me neither. I think I think he'll stick with Shaw, but Trippier wouldn't. I think he's the opposite me. of Pogba personally. I think Shaw's I really, the opposite of Pogba. I really I think, think for Man United as well for club. It's fantastic. Yeah, do you think, I don't, I don't, to England, I don't think he's doing it at the moment. I think Chilwell's probably the better option, but I don't know whether he's going to play as it, this current protocol. I said before the tournament was. that Luke Shaw in the back four doesn't work. He's be, he'd be better in a five. Chilwell would be the best option in the four, but obviously you can write Chilwell and Mount off. They're not going to be playing. I think I think the midfield three, I can really see it now. I think it'll be Royce, Henderson, and I do think he'll go compact it with Calvin Phillips. I really do. I know there's not much there, but I can see that happening. I can see it happening. Personally, I think the better option would be Jude Bellingham. I think it brings a bit more balance to the midfield because um, he can go forward with the ball, but he can also get back and tuck in. Um, I think Bellingham's ready to start a game of that magnitude, unfortunately. I, I, I think it's good. I, that, I really I mean, like he Bellingham. He Champions but... League quarter-final this year and he was man of the match at the Etihad. But the amount, of, the amount of people that want Bellingham playing but then not Sancho is bizarre. I'm not. I'm not saying you're that person. I'm saying there is a lot of people that say, "Oh, Bellingham should be in the team." But oh yeah, that, I'm not. That S- Sancho now play Greenish instead. Like they played in the same side, and Bellingham's a prospect. He's a very good prospect, and he's doing very, very well. Sancho is starting to hit where he's actually contribute. You know, I'm, 36 goal contributions or something this year. I know it's stats. I know it's not all played on that, but. I don't understand how you'd want Bellingham, but not Sancho. Like I know they play different positions, but just in terms of what what they're ready for and how much credibility you put to their what they do for their club side, you know, they, I, I I tend to agree with what you say. That I think you'll compact the midfield, which worries me in itself because I I I don't want to see Phillips, Henderson, and Rice like that's Bridge that's setting far. up to lose. That, that's setting up to lose, in my opinion. Like I think you, you're going to lose a game one nil quite tight. Yeah, I personally drop Phillips and Baltimore. Oh, I think I think it's harsh and Leeds fans won't like it, but he's been okay. But I don't think he offers and I was against maybe Henderson even being included in the squad, but I think last night's proved he's he's just, he's kind of fit. And I think I think he'd rather gamble on the kind of fit Henderson based on what Phillips has offered so far. And he was good in the Croatia game, Phillips, but I think the two games since I'm not sold, I don't think. The 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 Jordan Henderson factor, right, is 
He's the most senior member in the squad. He's got the most caps. He's achieved the most in club football. Uh, obviously, I know there's an argument that Carl Walker's got, you know, obviously three Premier League titles. But, you know, what would you rather, three Premier League titles or a Premier League title in a European Cup? You know what I mean? So there's, a, there's an argument that he's achieved the most in club football uh, that's on the pitch as well. He's a, he's a natural leader. He's a captain uh, of the second biggest club in Britain. He should and be the England captain, by the way. I think the only reason he's, he's not a shoe in for a start. Um, but I think when he came onto that pitch last night, we were leaking chances um, in the first half, towards the end of the half. When he came in, he just brought a, a real assurance to the midfield. Czech Republic hardly had a sniff second half. He, he, he almost just sort of controlled the pace of the game when he came on. I think he's so overlooked by a lot of players, uh, a lot of fans. I'm probably not so much in the last two or three years. I think he's started to get the credibility he deserves. But for me, he has to play. He has to play in there. Um, and I would definitely play Declan and Royce alongside him because I just think that he's naturally a better player than Calvin Phillips. I love Declan um, Royce. I, I, I think he reads the game really, really well. He's a, he's a mature head on young, on young shoulders, really. Um, the back four, I mean, I, I, I was not convinced by Reese James one bit. I've, I've said actually for, for a few people now that I think that... Um, that we'd been playing a lot better. We've, we, if, I don't know if he's put some maybes, but Trent Alexander-Arnold, we do lose a lot with him. He's not everybody's cup of tea, but he 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 would have brought a lot to this England side, in my opinion. Um, but moving into the knockout stages now, we are where we are. It's likely that we're going to be playing the Germans. I would prefer us to set up with a back five as well. I'd have Trent nowhere near the knockout stages against a team like Germany, though. He's not got the defensive capabilities at all for that. He's fine in like a Czech Republic game, something like that. But I think Walker's your man, isn't he? Right back. He had a poor if, first game, didn't he? If we do go with a five, let's just say we do go with a five, boys, would you slip Walker in or would you be confident to put Mings in there as well? Mings has kind of proved himself at the minute, hasn't he? I wouldn't, if you asked me that question at the start of the tournament, I'd have said Walker all day long. But I think Mings has actually done one. He's really unfortunate to be dropped. What do you think, Mark? No, nah, not for me. I, th- I think if you go for a five, I think I'd I'd be tempted to put Walker in there just to just to cover the cover it from a pace angle more than anything as well. Because I think one thing that both France and Germany are going to come with is potentially depending on who they line up with is a lot of pace. You know, with I mean Mbappe is ne- next level. Um, I do think I'd, I, if Germany were to go far in this, I do think Timo Werner is going to play a part of sorts. Um, and I think that's that's one thing with note with to, with the German side is they've got a lot of players that don't turn up every game, but there's one of them will turn up. Like um, I've said to a couple of Chelsea fans before, after watching Havertz in the Bundesliga, on his day he's the best, he's one of the best players in the world, and on, on his day he's absolutely awful. Um, and when he turns up, he turns up and scores big, big goals or a lot of goals. Um, and I think Werner's a bit like that. And I think Muller's made a career on stuff like that, really. Like, and I th- that that's what worries me with Germany. Their team doesn't bother me. It's the the fact that they've got one player that can probably turn up on that day, and I don't know whether we do. I think the thing Harry Kane turns up, we win, don't we? And he hasn't turned it, up yet. They, I th- that, that's that's the that's the thing with England is England will go as far as Harry. Kane. Like we we get that group without Harry Kane playing the game, any of them games. We should do anyway. We we cannot beat any of those three sides. I, I, I guess far so we might even be hungry without Harry Kane. Like, I, th- I think they're a different team away from their home stadium. I think you'll see that tonight. Um, but like, we, I don't think we can beat any of them without Kane. So you've got to, you've got to get him going. Um, and if it doesn't happen, I think we're going out. If, if I, I think if Harry Kane doesn't score on Tuesday, I think we're out. Interesting. I mean. The way that the, the, the it's got, I just think that we got it in us. We can we can win a game against one of these big boys. We can do it. I think we'll need a lot of luck, and we'll need a lot of luck to progress to even a final. The way that the, the way that the tournament's going to shape up, but I just think that we have got it in us. I'm I'm still really optimistic about us through this tournament. I've never seen England play this way before. I've, you know, we've always looked quite open at the back. Um, I keep saying, I just think something, something big is still yet to happen for us. So clinging on to that, I'm going to back us and I'm going to think that, we'll, that I think I think we'll beat the Germans. I think we'll beat them. We do as well, yeah. I mean, we're going to have egg on our face next week. We get smashed, don't we? But 
So, so be it. I think the fans are going to play a big part, by the way. I think that's one thing. I think our, our crowd is... Um, I, in fact, I will say, I think our crowd's been terrible. I think um, it's been filled fun. It's been filled mainly with about 4,000 people that go all over Europe watching England that you can't really hear. And a load of people who upload videos to YouTube. Ironically, this is going on YouTube. But, like, it's... Um, I, I, I'm hoping now that it's sort of 45,000, 60,000, there's actually going to start being an atmosphere there. And... and because they're going to need it, because you've seen France. That, that is one thing I'll say with France. They did not look comfortable against Hungary in that in that sort of environment. And that is the advantage of this tournament when you do play at home. You do you do have home games, but it's only as intimidating as you make it. The Scot- I've, I've been to an England-Scotland game at Celtic Park. It's the most intimidating place. Well, not intimidating. I wasn't scared myself, but like it's the most hostile environment I've ever been to in my life. We didn't make that for Scotland the other day. Hostile one bit. Like it was, it was like being at home for him, and I think there's no way we'd have played that game at Hamden, and it would have been as easy as what we played, as what we allowed them to play. Sorry. So I think the fans are going to play a big, big role in us because when you have these tight games, the small margins like that are, are massive. So yeah, I I wouldn't have done this yesterday, but I'm going to back us to win now. <laughs> It's only because you're going as well, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, th- I, th- I, th- I do. I do think we can do it. I, I think I do take your point about we do look different, and that might not always be a good thing necessarily in terms of what it looks like on the eye. But you are right in what you say about Spain. I know Germany when they won the 2014 World Cup, they did score a few more goals in the group. I think they beat Portugal four nil, um, but that was after a sending off. They end up drawing with Ghana and beating America 1-0. And then they basically, except for the Brazil game, where they think they beat them like 7-1. That was basically 1-0 the entire way as well. So it, it isn't, and no one remembers that without looking back. So you, it's not how you do it. It's, it's the fact of doing it. So, yeah, o- hopefully we can just completely 1-0, one, one terrible football the whole way. <laughs> This, I think it'll just breed confidence as well. I think you know a massive result against win, against one of the one of the juggernauts of the tournament in the next a win stage. Tuesday, especially Germany. If it's Germany and they beat them, you think twenty eighteen was mad with how bad it was. But it'll be it'll be next level. And I know people, and I agree with you both, you boys, when you say about the World Cup being bigger than Euros, it is. Of course, it is. But we're we're not Germany where you've won X amount of trophies where you can sort of pick and you know. We'll take anything at this point. I yeah. mean, pe- people are up for the Nations League. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, we'll win, whatever we win, we'll take. And I think if we can beat Germany, I think it's going to be unbelievable in this country. It's just, um, it's just disappointing to see for me, like, how everyone, the whole country, the way that the euphoria and everyone came together in 2018 and they were riding the wave and it was fantastic. And we went deep in the tournament. I actually think we're playing better football now than we were then. We're playing more no. mature football. We're playing better tournament football better, right now, we, in my opinion. We might be a better professional football team. I don't think we're playing better football, but I get what you're trying to say. We're better playing better tournament we're, football. We're, we're a better, we're a better professional group of players playing again. There's a bit more structure to what we're Everyone doing. Everyone was behind Gareth. Where's that gone? It's expectation, isn't it? There's an expectation that we should be reaching at least the semi-finals, whereas we're given a freebie in the, in the yeah. World Cup. Yeah. We the only other time where we had no expectation way. was 2014, and we absolutely. It was awful, but that 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 could that could have been the 2018 World Cup because we went in with the same expectation and the same level of sort of hope on the same on the players, and it just ended up going the other way. Like the difference in 14 was they shattered us with the group, didn't they? I mean, it's oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, and Costa Rica started playing well as well. So it was they won it, didn't they? Costa Rica. <laughs> <Something like> yeah. <laughs> absolutely crazy. Um, I, I'm just thinking back to tour- tournament football. I mean, how many? How many knockout games have we have we won in the Euros? I actually don't think we've won one since 1996, last, have we? It's like, I can't remember the last one we've won. 19, yeah, 1996 is the last time we've won a knockout game in the Euros against Spain on penalties yeah. in the quarterfinals. Even, even in the group stage in the Euro 96, which just seems like the beacon of hope, I don't think we're very good, were we? Um, I think we had... Was it... We drew to Switzerland, beat... Uh, beat Scotland 2 now but then we thrashed the Netherlands didn't we 4-1 I think that's sort of what boosted everyone it, then we beat it got Spain progressively on better it got progressively better and, well come on a bit more of the same it was, it was 
by the by the end of it, it was you thought we were going to win it, kind of thing. The um, difference being going back to your point, well, the atmosphere at Wembley was unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, like and that, and and but that, that's the whole thing of you need to go and make these play, places difficult to play. And I mean, you, you, club football is the same. Club football is a lot easier, you know. Like you go you go to Anfield on a Sunday afternoon, 12, 12 o'clock kickoff, one o'clock kickoff. It's, it's easy. Go there on Champions League. There's a reason why they say about Anfield and Champions League. Because it is, it's it's an atmosphere. It's just different atmosphere. It's a different place to play. Like, so the the fans are going to play a huge part. Um, like you say about '96, it was unbelievable. You know, you, look, you watch any of them videos now, and the thought of playing in that crowd if you were the opposition, uh, the thought of playing in that stadium if you were the opposition, it just be ridiculous. So let's let's just plot our route now, our projected route. Um, that, that the odds would suggest right now that it's going to be Germany, Sweden, France, then Belgium, that, uh, then Italy or Belgium in the final. That's what the odds right now are suggesting, right? How far can we go? Semi-final for me. We're not, we're not good enough to beat France or Belgium. How far can we go? I think, I think we, can, we can win it. I, I'm, that's a hell of a run though, isn't it? Like that—that like, that is one you hell of a deserve, run. I mean, if you win, it is, but yeah. I feel like there's going to be many twists and turns to come. Come, I feel like that. That's, well, that's, that's Saturday night one. game. That Saturday night game uh, under the lights. Uh, is it going to be in Rome? Is it uh, the quarter final? I just think that, that that there'll be something special going on. It'll take something into that game. Big massive win could be Sweden again in a quarter final. I think we we did a fantastic job against them in the World Cup. There's usually more, an more upset the though. Same. There's usually that's an upset in the knockouts. Like, there's usually one team that's like comes out of nowhere and wins a game, and that just throws the whole draw out. I think the Italians will get upset because like, everyone's hyped about them. So I think someone's going to take them out. Flat track bullies. Yeah, I think I think that's that's not a bad shout. I I don't think they. I actually think they'll win it, but I think they'll either win it or get knocked out by a team that they probably shouldn't expect, do. Yeah. I think I think put them against a France, put them against a Germany and a and them sort of teams, I'd I'd be quite confident. But it's you could see them losing against like a like a second place in the group type team. Sum it up right now, then I'm gonna stick our stick the neck up the line and on the projected route I'm gonna say that we'll get to a semi final. Overall winners I still stick to my guns all the way and say Belgium. I think they'll be the team that get knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. They, they always beat us, don't they? Though? They just seem to beat us. They just like beating us. They've got a poor defence, though. We said that before, though. And like, they, they oh, like, like uh, for, for us, I think they'll beat... They could beat... They, I don't think for us, but I just think against other teams. Um, it's got worse, hasn't it? We, I mean, they're playing one-off denier, the Marl and the Boyata, and then Alderweireld and the Tom and aren't young anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Summary, where do you think England will get to and who do you think will win? Go on, Sam, I'll let you go. Semi-final France. Semi-final Italy. But we all think we'll get to a semi-final then. Come on, Optimistic the boys. Optimistic semi-final. You wait till next Wednesday when we go up City. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it wouldn't be a centre circle podcast if we didn't touch on our team. So quick... Uh, Cool. Quick word on the potential new manager then, Sam. Fantastic. Best appointment we could have got. Um, if he does what he does at the Barnes into West Brom, I think he should be favourites to go up. Um, but he's got to be announced first. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know once he's announced. Interesting, interesting. Well, looks like we've lost Mark. Um, and I'll have a quick quick chat about Bruno Lager anyway. And um, yeah, pretty pleased with the appointment so far. We seem to have got our business in order. Um, at least we've got it done and dusted. You, you look at the calamities at Palace, Everton, Spurs, you know, even you boys to an extent, the, the you know, Celtic, another team that was a shambles. So we've got it done quick, quietly, and uh, effective. So, yep, uh, making moves already in the transfer market and push on. Let's get going next season. I can't wait. Um, hopefully, the boys will get a good pre season under their belts, the ones that can. Um, Pedro Neto's already back in some form of. Um, you know, impact training, so that's all, all good as well. So, yeah, really optimistic moving into next season. But first and foremost, let's deal with what we've got to hand, and that's the boys, the three Lions. Let's get behind us. Tuesday, five o'clock. 
Not sure if it's on BBC or ITV. That's um, a big difference, that is. Look at the records between the two. So let's hope it's the BBC. It is, isn't it? That was that was uh, that was talked about, weren't it? The last World Cup. Um, that because obviously. I think it yeah, might be BBC. Well, could be, could be. I mean, I can't stomach Sam Matterface so much longer, to be honest. Uh, I know you like he's, him, but he's, nah. I don't like him. He's alright. He's, you know, he's just not got that same like you as uh, as till as the other. But, um, but now, anyway. Good chat. Get this one on. So, as always, please like and subscribe. Bye.